You're abandoning all for nothing. have come from the City of Destruction. My city. And I am going to that which is Celestia. Its prince bids me go. Prince! I am an enemy of this prince. I hate his laws, his people. I come here to oppose you. Beware what you do, Apollyon, for I am on the road that belongs to the Celestial Prince. Silence! Prepare to die, pilgrim. For I swear by my infernal abode that I shall spill your soul where you stand. As I slept, I had a dream. A dream. Your filthy hands off me! Shut your mouth! Ah. And I want no trouble from you. Are you oh. all right, friend? Oh. Forgive me. I... I didn't realize anyone was there. I... Ah. Let me help. I'm all right! Are you? Well... I'm in jail. Am I not? Yes, we are. <laughs> and right you are. And you, for what? Murder? Theft? What treachery brings us together? Preaching. <laughs> An errant Christian. What did you do? Take a wrong turn, good pilgrim? Lose your way? No. I'm on my way. Blast if they haven't locked me up with a lunatic. And I suppose God's map to heaven leads through Bedford Jail. Perhaps. Huh. Then do tell, Pilgrim. Perhaps I too may find my way out of this stinking pit! Quiet! In there! Ah! If you would hear me... Then I shall begin at the beginning. Ah. A storyteller as well. A story might be just the thing to pass the time away. <laughs> Do tell, Pilgrim. I and the rats shall listen. My journey begins in Elstow. A place not far from here. <laughs> 
I was quite a troublemaker in those days. A real menace. Pass it over <laughs> here, Bull. Throw the ball to me. Throw it. Here, catch. Ow, that hurt. You take hey. that and that. Stop. Hope that teaches you a lesson, Philip Smith. You know this. No one hits me. No, sir. Not John Bunyan! Ow! I shall have that filthy mouth of yours washed out once ow, and for all! Ow, it is the last ow, thing I do! Ow, that really hurts. No ow. son of mine! No Bunyan! <laughs> Poor as we may be, we'll have ow, a gutter ow. for a mouth! You will get to your chores, or it will be the whip at your back! <laughs> what am I to do with you, John? You were to be about your chores! And that filthy language. I'm sorry, Father. Are you? I promise I shall never swear or use foul language again. I promise. And you will get to your chores? Yes, Father. Right away. All right, then. But you will not be allowed to play for the remainder of the day. You will remain in this room. You must think about your actions, John. Yes, Father. Oh, and John, about the chores. John? John! John Bunyan! John Bunyan! <laughs> Come on, let's go steal some of Master Bevan's cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I caused my parents many a heartache and did no better when I grew to be a young man. <laughs> my friends and I were known ruffians and I was chief among them. In fact, one of our band once said of me... Why, if it wasn't for people like Johnny here, the devil would have no company in hell. <laughs> I was a happy-go-lucky fellow. <laughs> but I knew I was bad. Real bad. The thought of hell tormented me always. And night time was the worst. Ah! Ah! I thought I should change for the better. Do something helpful to others. A cause. Something that would save me from hell and give me a place in heaven. So I did what I thought to be the most sacrificial thing. I joined the army. This is madness! What's the good of all this? For our people our country. And why do you think the other side fights? Huh? For the same thing, dunce. They do it for country as well. But in the end, young Bunyan, we're all just killing each other just the same. And going straight from this hell to another. And going straight from this hell to another. Sir, I can't. I, I, John. I will go. No, I, I. No! No, wait! that day that both good men and bad men died side by side in war. The real battle was the one within my own heart. And I longed for peace. I longed for peace. For someone to show me the way. <laughs> Ha <laughs>
<laughs> Why are you crying? <laughs> I am afraid. Afraid of what? Of death. For I know that as all men, I shall one day die. And that thereafter, I shall face God's judgment. Try as I might, I am sinful. And I don't know what to do. Flee from the coming wrath. What? Where must I flee? See that narrow gate. I cannot. Look through your tears. Do you see the shining light? I... I believe I do. Keep that light in your eye and go straight to it. There you shall find the gate. And at the gate you shall be told what to do. War brought me face to face with death, and I was scared. Scared that I would die and end up in hell. So, I tried as much as any man could to be good. I attended church regularly, stopped using foul language, read the Bible, got married, and began to work. No one in all of England would be as deserving of heaven as I. And? And nothing. I was empty. No matter how good I thought I had become, there was something missing. But God led me on. Perhaps I'll find work here. a most wonderful experience whilst reading Matthew this morning. Do tell. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden. And I shall give you rest. <laughs> oh dear me, I too have been blessed by that promise and have felt Jesus so near to me. Oh, yes. Well... Oh! Oh! Pardon me, ladies. Well, good day, good sir. If you seek work, I do have a pot or two that needs mending. I beg your pardon. But it is I that would seek your help, kind lady. Oh? You see, I too think of myself as a Christian. I am not one to eavesdrop, but I must confess, to hear you speak of the Lord is to hear you speak of a very dear and close acquaintance. Well, of course. Well, what is your experience, dear Tinker? Is it not the same? I have tried hard, very hard, to do good, to obey God as my master, to fear and honour him and try to please him. But it is to me, dear ladies, as if my goodness is but a new coat of paint on the same old building. I try to do what is right, what is good, yet... Your heart is still the same? Oh, Pastor Guilford, just in time. You were saying, Master... Bunyan that my goodness is but a new coat of paint on the same old building. But you... Yes? You, madam, seem to me to be a new building altogether. <laughs> Bless you, dear boy. Bless you. You need to lay down your burden, young Bunyan. Ah, uh, yes. Uh. I know, young Bunyan, you need to lay down your burden. It is through Christ's goodness that we are saved, not our own. For by grace are we saved, through faith. Christ said, Come to me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He is your saviour, Master Bunyan. Which means, he saves those that cannot save themselves. Again I say, lay down your Burdens. That burden. 
There is one on every man and woman. I carry my own. Your load is lightened. Heaven's light fills your heart. Your journey ends. Oh no, dear friend. Once the light penetrated my heart, the journey was just beginning. And I saw clearly that one must journey on toward the light. And the way is not always easy. Ow! Hold still, Father. <laughs> uh, done. Now you're ready to preach. <laughs> Wonderful. My eldest daughter is the best assistant in Elsto. And the prettiest, I might have. <laughs> <laughs> And you are the most handsome preacher. Are you certain? Hmm. Yes, you still are. Uh. I don't need sight to know that, Father. All right, we're ready. Where's Johnny? Ready. I gather I've come to the right place to hear the illegal preacher. If you mean the Tinker Preacher, indeed you have. But you needn't worry. We meet every day, and the authorities haven't bothered us yet. And I shall soon see if he lives up to his fame and his writings. Ah, his pen is but his sword. <laughs> <laughs> so truly a man of conviction. I crave that. I am weary of empty preaching from the official church. Come then. Enter with us, for he shall be here shortly. This man Bunyan knows that any unauthorized preaching is against the law. He is guilty of breaking the statute against unlawful assembly. That tinker preacher need only speak one word, and this arrest warrant will suffice to put an end to his so-called church. I must warn John. I must warn him. John! Thank goodness I have found you. Found me? I am on my way to preach. Listen to me, John. You must not preach today. What? The magistrate of Harlington has sworn a warrant for your arrest. Oh, John. If you so much as utter one word. I will not dismiss the meeting on that account. But, John, you mustn't. Father. My dears, listen to me. We must be brave. No, Father. John. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Listen now. How will the people keep the faith if their pastor is unwilling to suffer loss for it? I shall preach God's word, come what may. You knew that you would be arrested? That is madness. <clears throat> The scripture saith, Whom Christ has set free is free indeed. And the time will come when you will not worship in this building or that place, but the true worshippers... John Bunyan! The true worshippers will worship in sincerity and in truth. John Bunyan! The scripture saith, it is better to put... I have here a Lord warrant for your faith. arrest! ...is the help of mine. Be brave, my darling. God be with you, Father. God be with you. From where do you presume to get the authority to preach, Tinker? From the scripture, sir. Indeed. The scriptures tell us, if any man minister, let him do it in the ability which God gives him. Surely you are familiar with the epistle of Peter. I am a judge, not clergy. Be that as it may, you have the right to exercise that, uh, gift within the privacy of your own family. Otherwise... Otherwise? You may not! Yet God's word compels me to share it with others. Your word conflicts with God's, which... That says... is enough. You will take three months to think about this, Tinker, in prison. And then you will decide whether you are willing to submit to our decision. 
that is to attend the parish church and abandon your preaching and incessant writings. If you refuse, you'll be banished from the realm. And if you are ever found again in England, you will be hanged by the neck until you be dead. But that is our verdict. Take him away. And Betsy? Johnny? How are they? They're fine, Father. Johnny found another frog and put it in the tea kettle and, well, he's doing extra chores today. <laughs> <laughs> Father, when will you... I'm sure I will be home soon, darling. I pray so. I'm proud of you, Father. <clears throat> Sorry, little miss, but you need to go now. Yes, sir. I'd best be showing you to the door. Mother or I will be back tomorrow. We'll bring you some more paper for your writing. Ah, that I know he needs. The man writes day and night. Stay warm, my little one. Yes, Father. You too. I love you. I love you, my little one. John Bunyan, I'm here to inquire whether you are now willing to submit to the laws of this land and desist from holding public meetings which are an unlawful assembly. If you refuse, you shall remain in this prison. What say you, Bunyan? Sir, as God is my witness, I have what not spoken any evil in our meeting. I cannot go against God's word. God has made me a pastor. How can I go against his will? So you could walk out of here a free man if you just agree not to preach? I know what I would do. You've lost everything, John Bunyan. Are you so certain you're on God's path? God does not promise us an easy road. The truth is, difficulties come to each one of us. Bunyan? What is happening? It's the plague. It has infected London. People are coming to the country to escape it. We cannot sit around and wait to be infested in these small quarters. We are letting some of the prisoners go home. Home? Now, wait a minute. You must not leave Bedford. You are still a prisoner, but I know I can trust you. Bunyan, once this is over, you will return. And may God have mercy on us all. The plague killed over a hundred thousand people, many more than the war. Everyone in Bedford was affected, in one way or another. As promised, I have returned. I am glad to see you well. True to your word, Bunyan. But I had no doubt. And your family? Are they well? Ah, yes. And I have wonderful news. I will be a father once more. Elizabeth is with child again. And I also have good news for you. You have been granted a parole. Paroled? With all the conflict this country is having, the government changes the law frequently. Depending who is in power, you are free to live at home. But beware, Bunyan. And take heed. The laws could change overnight. Those that have gone before us loved the word of God 
and confess that they were pilgrims and foreigners on this earth. John Bunyan! Yes, I am he. And I am a constable. And this is an illegal meeting. And? Is that the end? Is that your journey? Your pilgrimage? Back in this foul prison for twelve years? In truth, Bunyan, a pilgrim that never gets to his destination is on no pilgrimage at all. Seems to me you have been walking in circles. A professional prisoner would be a more fitting title for you. <laughs> Perhaps. But many people carry their cages with them, no matter how freely they roam. <sighs> that is true enough. I have prayed fervently and asked God for what other purpose I had been set aside. When I finally realised my purpose, the words flowed faster than I could write. One night, as I slept, I had a dream. I was a pilgrim, living near the City of Destruction, wondering which way to go. When I was brought into contact with a man named Evangelist, who set me on the right course. Eventually, I met with several opponents, some of which were Judge Hate Good and one, a fiendish Apollo. Pastor Bunyan! Pastor Bunyan! What? Are you done? Is your sentence over? Oh no! When the law changed and the church was given the freedom to meet in public, I was chosen by the free church to be its pastor. What, in jail? Yes. He goes to preach his sermon, talks with the people, and then he returns. The honest man that he is. John's sentence has not yet been overturned. You see, every pilgrim has a resting place. For now, God has seen to it that this is mine. This is the fruit of my time here. I think you will enjoy it. Remember, friend, a pilgrimage with God never goes in circles. He always gets us to his destination, no matter what the road reveals. length of his life. I do not know if I shall remain a free man to preach the gospel of Christ and be locked in prison or end with the hangman's noose about my neck. Whichever it may be, if through my freedom or imprisonment or yet by my death I can convert but one soul to Christ, my life shall have been well spent. Prison or death, or liberty and life, I shall stand by my God, and with bold and heart do pray that as this pilgrim, this unworthy traveller, comes at last to that great and celestial city to which his Lord has beckoned him come, his footsteps, his falls, scrapes and tumbles, may chart the path for other weary travellers. And thus, at last, one firm step at a time, may guide them home to God. <laughs> <laughs>